Hello, welcome to the Moxie Marine YouTube channel. In this video, I am uh, building a 5.0 liter multi-port fuel injection engine, and I'm um, at the stage now where I'm uh, priming, the, priming the oil system in the engine. So I've got this uh, old priming tool. It's a uh, Proform. I don't remember the part number. I'll put it in the description, but it's a tool that you used to use a drill, and the other end of it mates with the oil pump down in the engine. And as you spin it with the drill, you spin it clockwise, and um, as you spin the drill, it'll build up oil pressure using the pump inside the motor. And um, you can't get the pressure unless you use a special tool. Um, the tool has this shape. So that, see that shape right there. That shape is down there where the, the real distributor in there, that shape is what helps it build oil pressure. It blocks off some passages down there so that you can build oil pressure. So, and this, this tool has that shape in there. It's made out of aluminum. So um, as I spin this drill, it's gonna, um, uh, build up oil pressure and I've already done this so I've already already had the engine pressure uh, pressure pressurized with oil but the reason I'm doing it now is uh, this has a remote oil cooler over there and it's actually got a fairly large uh, oil filter that the customer gave me to put on this engine so um, the purpose of priming it for the first time is to pump oil through that oil filter and get the oil lines and all that filled up and it takes probably about 10, 15 seconds for that to happen when it's run, when it's, when you're spinning it. So if I were doing this for the first time, it would take a while. I could start the drill, it would take a while before I see pressure build up here. But you're about to see the pressure come up pretty quick because it's already full of oil. So let's go ahead and do that now. And you can see there, there's a 60 mark. That's what we can get. Maintains a steady 60 psi. All right, so that lets me know that the, the oil filter is full. The oil filter right there is full. All the lines are full. The engine is full. So it's making pressure. So now um, the next step I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this oil priming tool out, and uh, actually no, I'm going to leave the oil priming tool in, and I'm going to build up oil pressure again. But this time I'm going to run. I'm going to turn the engine over with the starter, and have the engine spinning around, and have the, the drill making oil pressure, that way the bearings will get really lubricated because they're turning and getting full lubrication on, in, in all directions. So I'm gonna do that now. So in order to do that, um, there's a trick to it. The flywheel that goes on the back of this engine would normally be required to mate with the starter so you could turn this engine over. This is a, a boat engine, it was a fairly heavy, uh, thick flywheel. But as you can see, the flywheel is not gonna fit in there because the engine stands too close to the engine. But I had this idea, of taking the, uh, the flex plate from the automatic transmission vehicle engine. It, it, the crankshaft's the same, so it'll bolt, up, it'll bolt up to this crankshaft. And the flex plate, I might just could get it in there and bolt it on. And then I can have a, a gear for the starter to uh, engage with and turn the motor up. All right, where I last left off, I was discussing uh, putting an automatic, automatic transmission flex plate on this engine, which I've now done. Uh, to do this, it wasn't very, it wasn't easy. and. Uh, Matter of fact, this entire process is not going to work. If your engine stand only has this much space between the back of the engine and your and your uh, these arms of the engine stand, this is not going to work. But uh, I had to take take the bottom these bottom arms off the stand. I had to support the front of the engine separately from the stand. Take these bottoms arms off bottom arms off to slip this uh, flex plate up in there and then put the arms back on. So it wasn't easy. So uh, again, if you don't, if you don't have if you don't have a wider engine stand here, this is not going to work for you. Um, I was thinking maybe you could put the flex plate on the crankshaft as you install it, but that won't work either because you have the rear main seal. The one piece rear main seal must go on first before the flex plate, so that's not going to work. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this because uh, because it's an interesting thing I'm going to do. Um, so before I turn this engine or prime the engine with oil, get oil pressure in, and turn the engine over. I need to seal this up. This this block is actually a uh, like a late 80s block. It's a roller block, which they made in 1987 or later. But um, it's pre-fuel injection because the fuel injection blocks, uh, even though they had this hole, there was no drill. They didn't drill these holes here. This this hole here was for the actuator rod. It came off your camshaft and moved your mechanical fuel pump around. That's what this is for. It's for your mechanical fuel pump. So it was a heavy duty rod here that went back and forth and it moved your uh, fuel pump lever. And then this hole here was for the oil in this area to drain back down to the block or back in the oil pan. 
um, before I pump this uh, engine with oil and turn it over, I want to make sure that uh, I'm going to have to seal this up to make sure no oil comes out of here. To do that, I bought a gasket. Uh, I'll put the description of the, the part number of the gasket in the description of this video. And then uh, this engine already had this blank off plate uh, that was already on there. So um, I bought a new gasket and then I'm going to put it back on with this, uh, this plate. So I'm about to do that now. And then uh, after I put the plate on, then I will uh, wire this thing up and turn it over with the starter. All right, I'm now installing the starter. This customer, uh, customer has provided a brand new starter. I love this bubble right here. So this is a brand new starter for his uh, Merc Cruiser 5.0 and I'm about to install it. So uh, uh, once I get it installed, I'm gonna hook it up to a battery with jumper cables, uh, use a remote start switch and turn this motor over and try to build oil pressure, build oil pressure with the engine turning over. All right, as I was saying, I'm going to build oil pressure with the drill, but at the same time, I'm going to turn the motor over. So I've got a battery, uh, and I'm using battery cables to uh, jump the battery to the starter and to the ground on the block there. And uh, the starter won't turn unless it's uh, unless the uh, solenoid is energized. So to do that, I'm using what's called a remote start switch. It's a uh, basically a, a switch that, with two wires, and when you pull the switch, the trigger, the motor will turn over, you let go, and the motor will stop. It's just like your starter switch on your car. And uh, you take the two leads, one of them goes to the battery positive and the other goes to the solenoid terminal on, the, on the, sol the, the solenoid or the start terminal on the solenoid, which is usually the inboard side. The inboard side is your start and the outboard side is your run. Um, this is used to power up things like fuel pumps and things like only when it's starting. So this terminal here will have 12 volts on it when the solenoid is energized and you energize the solenoid on the other wire. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this remote start switch to the solenoid and then uh, turn it over. The part number I bought is, uh, I bought this from, I think, uh, um, I think I bought it from AutoZone. It's part number, it's Innova, part number 36, 3630. Paid about $18 for it. And I have used other ways of jumping them, just take a wire and touch it to the terminal, but I get tired of doing that. I'm, I'm gonna try to use this more, higher, better, or more quality professional start switch. So let's see how, let's uh, hook this up and see how it works. Okay, I just want to show you how I've got this remote start switch wired up. So, as I was saying, I've got one of the alligator clips on this back terminal here. That's the uh, start terminal on the solenoid. And the other one I just got attached to this copper uh, battery cable uh, clamp. So, um, we're about to turn it over. And uh, I'm going to crank the drill over. Once I get the drill going, I'm going to have my shop assistant hit the trigger and turn the motor over. And this is gonna be live. We've never done this for so you're seeing it first time just like I am. Let me get this rag out of here so I don't suck it down in there. Um, one thing I wanna make sure of is I've got all the spark plugs out, so I'm free wheel. And I've, I've still got tape over the exhaust ports where I painted this engine. I haven't taken it off yet. And uh, so I've gotta have the spark plugs out so it doesn't suck that tape or blow the tape off from the exhaust port, port pulses. So like I say, I got spark plug out on all sides and we're about to build up oil pressure. So. Here we go. I'm going to build up oil pressure. When I give the signal, turn the motor over. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Now. Motor's turning. Let's go. All right. Okay. What I believe happened, if you notice, the oil pressure left about 60 and then it started dropping off. And I think what happened is uh, I've only got three quarts of oil in here, so I think I pumped the uh, oil pan the bottom oil pan dry, pumped all the oil up top. Cause this, this priming tool is turning the oil pump pretty fast, a lot faster than the uh, camshaft would at idle. So um, I believe that's what happened. So I'm gonna let it settle back down and I'm gonna do it again and uh, see if I can uh, put a little more oil in this motor. All right, I'm gonna do this one more time. Uh, the, I've already put, um, I put two more quarts of oil in here. It, I believe it holds Four and a half quarts, I believe, what the spec calls, but that's, I believe that oil filter is not the, uh, the say, factory or oil filter that's supposed to be on this engine. It's an extra high, or extra large capacity, so it's probably another half a quart there. So I'm gonna say five quarts, that's what I've got in the engine. Um, so the oil I use is uh, Haviland, it's made from Chevron, Haviland uh, 10W40, and it is uh, comes in a cardboard box and you get six quarts. So I poured five quarts out of this box. You can, there's an indicator on the side that tells you how much you got left. But so I've got five quarts in this engine now, and uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't run dry this time. So let's uh, let's try this again. I'm gonna turn it over, 
and my assistant is going to uh, start turning the engine over with the remote start. So here we go. What was that tapping sound? Did you hear something? Did you hear anything? I thought I heard a tapping sound. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. good to me. Made 60 PSI. This time it didn't pump the uh, oil pan. It didn't pump the oil pan out of uh, oil. So I'm uh, satisfied that this thing's making uh, good oil pressure. It's up to 60 PSI with the engine turning and that's great. Um, so uh, I'd say a this priming is a success. Um, at this time I'm going to install, I'm going to remove this priming tool. I'm going to install the distributor and then I'm going to do the same thing with the remote starter remote start switch and turn it and build pressure with the uh, distributor in the in the engine instead of the priming tool and that'll be the last uh, step I do for priming this engine. So let me get the distributor installed and we'll try it again. In this video I'm installing a distributor in a 5.0 liter Merc Cruiser multi-port fuel injection engine. This engine has Vortec heads on it which means it was uh, built in 1996 or later and they have a, a unique distributor system that's uh, different than most uh, distributor systems people are familiar with. Um, I've already covered this, uh, or I've already installed this distributor once in a video before. I'll put a link in this video or in the description of this video to that. But um, the customer asked me to take it back out and uh, take care of some rust that was going on back here, which is so that's what I did. So now I'm putting the distributor back in. Um, what I, like I was saying, this distributor does not control, you do not, you do not adjust the distributor by rotating it to control ignition timing. The ignition timing is done solely by the crank position sensor, which is right down there, right here. And um, what this does, all this does, it has a cam sensor in it. And the cam sensor tells the computer, I've covered this before in, in different videos, but the cam sensor tells the computer which revolution that the engine is on. It can be, the engine rotates through 720 degrees to complete the cycle, two complete turns. But in order to spray the injectors at the right time, it has to, in, in order to spray these injectors in sequence at the right time, it has to know where it is in a 720 degree cycle. And you cannot discern with that sensor with 720 degrees. That sensor can only pick up 360 degrees. That's the whole resolution it has. To get the other 360 degrees, you need a cam sensor because the cam rotates at half the speed of the engine. So the cam sensor can tell the computer which seven, which 360 degrees it's in, either the first 360 or the second 360, say on cylinder number one, for example. So all you're doing when you adjust this distributor, when you rotate the distributor, is you're adjusting the cam sensor so that it synchronizes with the crank sensor. If you get outside a certain range, the engineers have programmed the computer to look for that cam sensor signal during a certain portion of the crank sensor uh, degrees. If it's outside that, that range, it'll set a code. And uh, I think it'll still run, but it won't run sequential batch. I'm not really sure about all that, but anyway. So the bottom line is you want this cam sensor synchronized with the crank sensor, but you don't adjust it after that. There's no, there's no timing adjustment that can be done through the sister. Again, it's all done through the computer. So what I'm trying to tell you is um, to get this thing adjusted, um, this particular distributor doesn't have the clamp, the factory clamp on it, but I'm fixing to show you a trick. So if you look right here and right here, you can see, get down here better so we can see it better. There's flats on the side of that distributor body. There's one right, right there and there's one on the other side right there. Those flats, if they're parallel with, or if they're parallel with this um, body here on the distributor, this, this uh, boss here, then you're good because that means they're, the bolt is in the middle of the bracket and the bracket has two, it's like, the bracket's like a open end wrench and holds that distributor from rotating. And like I say, once the bracket's on there, if they put the proper clamp, you can't rotate the distributor. They won't let you. So that's what sets the cam sensor. It sets the cam synchronization. But in this particular distributor, I don't have the right clamp. Um, the customer gave me the distributor put in and the clamp wasn't on it. And uh, the clamp that was on here was the type that just clamps down and allows it to rotate. So um, I can either go find the right clamp, which I'll probably do, or you can use the other type. But as long as you tighten it down where the two flats are parallel with this boss here, or I guess you'd say in line with this, this bolt, 
you're probably going to be at the right setting for your cam synchronization and you don't have to adjust it after that so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to find the uh, proper clamp ho hopefully i can find one and, and lock the distributor down in, in the right place and like i said if you got the right clamp it locks it down where it needs to be you don't have to adjust it in this case i may not find the right clamp so if i don't then i can just make sure that those two flats are lined up uh like i said to you, with the flats on either side of this boss and i'll probably be okay so that's it um Again, this receiver is not used for set ignition timing. That's on 1995 and earlier engines. And uh, like these, the ignition timing on these engines is not adjustable other than going into the computer and reprogramming the computer, if, you, if, this, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that I did find the right clamp. This is the proper clamp for this type of distributor. You notice it kind of has two arms that go straight out and they uh, engage with the flats on the distributor and they lock the distributor down in the proper location for the cam sensor to be synchronized with the engine. If you look at it from the top, the slope of the distributor is, uh, there's a flat on that distributor, it's just about even with the uh, intake, so I'm pretty sure that's what the engineers designed, designed it to do. So um, this is the proper clamp, and this should uh, set the cam synchronization automatically. You shouldn't have to adjust anything. And it's pretty rigid, it won't turn. Um, I did have to put a washer under here because the clamp was kind of squeezing down pretty hard on this plastic distributor body, that the body's plastic. And so I wanted to pull this, clamp up a little bit so we wouldn't put quite as much downward pressure on this piece of plastic. It looked like it was squeezing it pretty good to me. So the shiver's now in. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, spin the engine over with the starter again and see if I uh, get oil pressure by spinning the engine and turn the oil, uh, turn the oil pump with the distributor as if it was running. But my, uh, my, pressure, my oil pressure gauge um, will not fit it won't fit in the hole because it's hitting the body of the distributor. So I'm gonna have to get a, I'm gonna have to get a little 45 degree turn uh, fitting here to be able to turn this this gauge out like that so I can read it. So I have to do that tomorrow. So uh, hope this made sense and uh, you learned something from it. And uh, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.